Welcome back. How was that? So bad. You see not dialed in I got after you did it? Ooh, welcome back to make content. We've got uh, an assortment of things on the docket today. We are talking about your favorite creator ever and the mm-hmm. takeaways uh, from him. We're talking about Deion Sanders, the power of content uh, with his sunglass sales. I've seen that's kind of skyrocketed as you know a part of culture that's kind of taken off. But, I mean, we could talk about Prime for probably an entire episode, yeah, yeah, to be yeah. honest with you. Pat McAfee on ESPN, we were at the office yesterday kind of watching and going back and forth on like whether or not we even really <laughs> like to watch it on TV anymore. The Roman Empire, just more uh, generalized <laughs> topic about trends on TikTok or social or whatever it is. And then uh, we looked at some more office spaces yesterday, which I came away. The more I think about it, the more pleasantly uh, surprised I was at, at the second go around that I'm excited about those those places. So I think we lock in somewhere today. Right Where? Or at live on the show? I'm, I'd be down. Nothing. We'll just LOI some people. So <laughs> <laughs> LOI, kidding. So, yeah, first up is my favorite creator. Have you ever seen I, – I wish I knew his actual name. I really should. His his handle is Tokni Corrado. To, have you ever seen him before? Can we, uh, can we just dive into something you just said right there about being so attached to a creator without knowing their name? Yeah. Do you have uh, any sort of take on that, like good or bad in terms of – No, I – I'll, yes, I do have a take. I don't think it's bad. I think his is bad because it's not something memorable. Like, there's no, there's nothing to draw from this. Toke or Nick Carrado. Like, I don't really know what it is, but I think of, like, speed. I think of Mr. Beast. I think of a lot of, like, I think prime. I think, you just fine, prime. I think it's a fine line. I actually think characters' names play better as influencers and creators than just using someone's name. Does that make sense to you? Like that, that would be my, my take. My, um, I, I guess it depends whether or not you're known for a certain thing or like the name of the way that people go about remembering you. Cause I think I, you know, I've, I've been very vocal about like, it's really important. I think as a creator, not to put yourself in a box and when you become so familiarized with the outside world as like one thing, or you only can do one thing, or you're just this person, as soon as you become this non-perfect person to these outside people who think of you in one way. You, it's it's kind of like a, do you think a shattering thing. Does that though? I don't know. It's why it just popped in my head when you said it, and I, it's not like a conversation. I think I've really ha- that we've had on here yeah. before. But I think about even with like Ike's lunch and like we'd be walking around and they'd be like, "Oh my god, you're the Ike's lunch guys," or like Tony Don's, whatever it was. It was like cool that they know us, but then it's also like like we're all also other we're like people, you know, and like real. Yeah, life, but so. you call you call uh, Portnoy Prez, right? Like I actually think that stuff is better to have than just be like David Portnoy or, you know, Nick Ercolano. Like, I think him being Don's probably gets him more love and attraction. Ike's lunch, like, if it was Sean's lunch, probably wouldn't have blown up. (laughs) Hannibal, right? Like, no one knew his name. So, I I actually do think, and you see it in your content all the time, right? With trivia, you call it nicknames. Prez definitely doesn't give a fuck because of the person he is. Um, But, like... He's built so much within the 20 year period. Yeah. And then I'm sure he just walks around sometimes and be like, oh, you're the pizza guy. You're the pizza guy. Yeah. I know he doesn't care, but like, that's, it's kind of weird. I think. I, no, I think it gives you more. Yeah. yeah. I, I, okay. I, that's what's lacking with me. I got nothing. You got nothing. I'm just Jack. You're just, you're just the white guy on Marlon Humphrey's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, anyways, yeah. uh, I, like I said, I really need to know Tokni is, is his name. It's not Tokni. It's got to be Tony. Tony. His name actually just might be Tony. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you idiot. So, but all right, but that goes to the point of don't make it hard on people. Anyways, Tony is my favorite creator. If you've never seen this guy before, Tommy's going to run some stuff on the screen right now. Some of his best TikToks. I've been following this guy for probably a year, year plus, and I think his skits are hysterical. He's just like, the, he makes every situation the most awkward. They're absolutely hysterical. And then one day, probably about six months ago, I'm scrolling on TikTok, his face pops down, and he literally sits down at a picnic table, and he goes, so I have cancer. And it was, I mean, it was one of those, like, screen stoppers, scroll stoppers, and you're just like, holy shit. Like, this guy, he is full of life, full of all this stuff, and he's just like, I have cancer. And this is where I think my love for him just went to a completely other level, he has not only taken on his battle with lymphoma, but, like, he has made it positive. He's made it relatable, all while being extremely educational about what drugs he's taking, about what chemo's like, about what diet he's on, about shaving his hair. Like, th- 
for someone who, who has alopecia, which is the furthest thing from cancer, it's a fully healthy thing, but losing your hair, the fact that he's able to do this and highlight and probably make, even if he makes one person more comfortable, like amazing journey, he's made probably thousands and thousands and thousands of people more comfortable with this. And I just genuinely think like this to me is the best utilization of content that I've ever seen. I want you after the fact to like go through and, and I think everyone who's watching will get a better appreciation for him but just like magical stuff from him. so let me ask you um his content pre-cancer and post-cancer or you know uh, intra cancer do you feel as if there's been any change in terms of uh like someone going through it and being an extremely positive person yeah. through it like i admire that so much because like that makes me want to not be as big of a piece of shit <laughs> in my normal life yeah, you know yeah, yeah. is there any exaggeratedness to that in the, no, in the intro no, it's just who no. he was both from, both from day one i mean his my favorite tiktok of him is you know the song like take a walk take a walk like whatever i'm not a great vocalist oh, but anyways it's just like him walking through chicago going to the fair going to the bean like it, it was always this and there has been no change besides okay. what the type of content is so yeah the reason the the reason i even asked that is because like i'm thinking about if something like that happened to me, like, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the tone and the energy of my content, like personally, my vlogs is very like it, there's an underlying like anger towards the world, right? At all times. <laughs> right. Even if I'm not angry, yeah, it, yeah, there yeah. just is, it, it's in there. Right. Yeah. So it's like, would my content be weird if I all of a sudden became, it, would you, would you rather watch me go through a process like that with the still underlying anger to the world <laughs> You know, but then it's like, oh, I don't really want to watch like a depressed guy go through cancer and every guy go through cancer. I, I think that that one is it's tricky. more of like an authenticity. Yeah, question, it, it is. Sense. It's tricky, but I do think that would be relatable too. now. You would probably at least, you know, I can't tell you how to do that content because you would want it to be how you genuinely feel in that moment. Do you feel targeted? Do you feel unlucky? Do you feel who, shitty? Who gave me this? Exactly. Yeah. Like that. I mean, these are all stages of grief and and. De and healing and dealing with all this stuff but i think it would be relatable to a degree right it would be relatable to you know it, it doesn't just relate to the person who has cancer it relates to the person whose family has like someone in the family has cancer and how to deal with them and so for you maybe it's you talking about with that anger towards the world mm -hmm. how like you don't you just don't want to talk to anyone and then someone in in his family is like Oh, I get it. It's his anger. It's nothing to do with me. It's not that he's closed off from me. It's just like how he's dealing. So, so I do think that the takeaway was generally like, what an amazing job. But also, if you do reach that ultimate peak of authenticity, like you're going to help someone, and and that's the purest form of of content. To me. Yeah, he um not I I wasn't familiar with his content before you sent it over, but like my he kind of reminds me of do you know Bob brilliantly dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a goat. I love his yeah. fucking content. He just talks, he does, goes on spiels for like a minute and a half about, usually about bacon, egg, and cheese for no <laughs> reason. But they're like, actually, when you said like my favorite content creator, yeah. he popped into my head. It's like my, I, I don't necessarily, there aren't a lot of guys that just like waste time on just like watching dumbass content, yeah. but like his is some of my favorites. But it's dumb and it's, but it's relaxing. It's relatable. It, it inspires in like a way that you wouldn't conventionally think it does. So mm. I just wanted to give Tony, I guess that's his name. I want to say it's actually not his name, but not, I'm not sure. Not, I, it wasn't necessarily like I, maybe I think his name, his first yeah. name is no, actually Tony. No, it definitely Tony. spells Tony. I guess. T-O-E yeah. and then yeah, there's two body parts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, you were like talk me. I'm like yeah. brother. Like, <laughs> Oh, man. Crossing well, the line at some check, point. Check him out if you guys haven't. I think most people will, will understand where I'm coming from. Yeah. Uh, and, and just definitely has deserved a shout out. I've been wanting to give him a shout out, and then we get caught up in the in the grand scheme of this that, thing. That type of like content, too, is um, it, it's both inspiring, but also it, it so helps when you're going through something difficult in the sense that like man it could always be yeah. worse and it's not even just like the shut the fuck up and push through it attitude it's just like most things are just not that serious you know most things are not things that need to be like making you lose your fucking mind most things are and this not, is to be clear exactly <laughs> like, and i'm saying like it, it's perspective it's, yeah. it's really really perspective it's like this guy can get out and film content and edit it and put it up and yeah. still feel good about life in general even though it could be taken away from him at any point yeah. when you're stressed about like a bill or like something it's like things could always Fan be so i mean i think the most applicable one is like you're, <laughs> you're stressed about your fantasy football waiver and yes. and like yes you might have real money but like let's take a step back and understand and i'm not even touching on the fact that like 
now the amount of people rooting for him, he's going to win this. Like, there's mm -hmm. no doubt in my mind. He's raised money for charity. He did a huge wall, created content around it. Like, the amazing things he did. I'm just talking about, like, this is good content. It's authentic. And you can, if you're good at content, you can literally make any scenario yeah. uh, positive. So, shout out to him. Deion Sanders, another content genius. And it's funny because no one really pictured Deion as, like, a content king. But this is what these people are. They're creators. They're genuine creators. He's got a content team following him at all times. He, he's got vlogs. He's ranking his sons on Instagram. Like, absolutely that hysterical. Was, that was wild. <laughs> that, that one was insane. But, like, if you're – hey, if you're – if it's a content play, it's a content. But he's not. Th that one felt ridiculous it was because so ridiculous. that was like four content. Whereas like I don't know though. That's what makes you're right. It you're right. It wasn't four content, but like he made something into content where it, it it was like more like he went out of his way to make content. Yeah. When it didn't need to be. Whereas for a while, like what he's doing now is what he was doing 20 years ago when yeah. he was playing in the league. There's just a lot more microphones and eyeballs and yeah. cameras in front of him now, so people are actually being exposed to who he is as as a person and. I think he's genuinely like really well intended, but also really, really talented, which is why yeah. this kind of like perfect storm of events is is happening. And it's it's been fun to watch. It's like one of the most electric stories in, in sports in a really long time. Besides the fact that I had Colorado State money line and I really wish that Colorado lost and they should have lost. The coach is a coward. But besides that what's point, the spread on the they're Oregon twenty one, twenty four point underdogs. They're gonna get smoked. Colorado. Yeah, okay. they're gonna get. I was gonna smoked. say yeah. If there yeah. was any ever yeah. a game. No, Bo like. Nix is gonna go crazy. Anyways, I think we talk about network effect all the time, right? Which is you're building content, which will then lead to subscription and product and awareness. And and you know we're doing something similar. And I talked to someone today about a newsletter and how that would just add to our network effect. And now we've got the podcast with Marlon. Deion Sanders' primetime's network effect is insane. This is peak, right? It's Mr. Beast levels of network effect where he has created so much attention that now the media covers every single thing he does. And then when one coach says one thing, he takes that and, and promotes the sunglasses in the most organic way possible. But because he's now has this business, like it fits into that network effect and his company did $5 million on Saturday in sunglass sales. Is there... um? Sorry, I, I don't know much about the history of Deion Sanders outside yeah. of obviously him being drafted by one of the best organizations in the history <laughs> of football. Why Why do people? so many people root against him? Has he ever done anything like bad off the field? Uh, I don't know. What What makes you say that? Because that has become the new new trend, new okay, topic. So that, 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 is that a straw man fallacy that I'm just no, saying? No, no, no. People definitely, I wouldn't say historically they are. If they were, it's your typical athlete, like big mouth talks a lot. So okay. like like people love LeBron, there's going to be equal okay. amount of hate. So, so, like what has LeBron ever done? Yeah, yeah. right. Like nothing bad. I, yeah. I, I get that. Um, yeah, so for Deion, I, I didn't know if there was anything warranted, like going back in his past where people like, this is what, et cetera, or he's just a really good athlete that talks a lot of shit. Yeah. Which I'm totally fine with. I mean, he high steps into the end zone. Like he's probably... I don't know if there's necessarily anything. I'm sure, you know, you're in the media and you're a pro athlete for so long. You got Thank some you. some skeletons in your closet. But I don't think there's, like, a sizable moment that people, like, you know, like, number four include. I, he feels like one of the um, – you, you could take lessons from this, this situation with Deion Sanders. This kind of feels like where – when I think about individual creators, I'm like, okay, I, I think there could be a system in place where – you know, if there's a spectrum of like the bottom one percentile and like the top one percentile, probably like the midi, the middle uh, 90th percentile, mm -hmm. I think you can systematize and be like, we, we could probably make you money yeah. Yeah, or make you into a full time content creator. Might take longer if you're down here, it might take shorter if you're up here, it might, you might make more money up here. He feels like a weird instance of he's like a top one percentile, right? Like yeah. he's so talented that yeah, I don't yeah. think most of the rules kind of apply for Deion Sanders. So I look at the situation, I'm like, yeah, he capitalized on a moment in culture. But he's so talented that it feels like these kind of things are going to continuously present themselves to him. And I almost feel like with the sunglasses, what what did he do? Okay, so he was wearing them, and then someone said something about like... Yeah, so uh, Jay Norvell, coward, head coach of Colorado State, said, when I shake someone's hand, I take off my hat and my sunglasses. Yeah, I saw that. So then uh, college game day, Fox Big Noon kickoff, uh, 60 minutes. Everyone was in Boulder over the weekend. Every time he did an appearance, he put sunglasses on the people, on Rock, on Kirk Herbstreit, on... 
McAfee on everyone. And so that was kind of his play and how he okay. just embellished, embellished, embellished. And it, I'll give him a ton of credit. Like, the handshake at the end of the game, which was highly anticipated. Like, he's made this into a pay-per-view what, event. What happened? What, uh, I didn't see at, With the handshake? Nothing really happened. Okay. They just had a very calm handshake. But, like, that was – he kept saying, like, wait till that handshake. Mm-hmm. And then when Colorado State's winning the whole game, everyone's locked in. Like, oh, I got to see this handshake. If he yeah. loses, they end up winning the game. But – on your point of yes, this middle portion, like it would just take different amounts of time. There's a there's a playbook, there's a game plan for it. He's in that one percent, like you said, and he has now changed the future of college football, right? With content. Like we get so excited when content creators do stuff massive. McAfee going from YouTube to ESPN, right? Mr. Beast going from YouTube to you know a chocolate bar company, Prime, you know, all that stuff. And now with Deion Sanders. He has literally changed like the, you know, you, you, Penn State, you don't put your name on the back of the jersey to if you don't do this stuff, you're not going to be able to recruit kids. Nick Saban, right? Like you got to change your ways. Bill Belichick, you got to change your ways or else you're going to be left behind because it's not just that he's made Colorado the most attractive place to play in the country from a fun standpoint. If you're an 18 year old kid, you've got, you know, Kawhi Leonard at the game, you got rappers at the mm-hmm. game. Like it's not only that. But actually, it translates to money. His son has the highest projected NIL value in the entire country. And Travis Hunter is probably going to be number two very soon. So that's where he's really changed the game. And, you know, if coaches don't, like, I think I give credit to Les Miles. Do you see the video where he's, like, doing the yeah, funny, yeah. like, people are going to mock him. But you better get with the times. Yeah. And then there's a the question of, are, can people like Les Miles even do that? Who do you create as the face of your program? Like, it infiltrates. It infiltrates every every um industry eventually and i was yeah i remember like thinking about this years and years ago where i was like man I, in in five years i didn't have like an actual reference of time frame but i was like <laughs> in five years like every home depot was going to have a, a recording studio yeah. in their home depot physical <laughs> shop for like employees to make content around because yeah. I, I genuinely believe it is like the single best top of the funnel type yeah. of thing whether it means buying or getting a customer to buy a ten dollar product or the number one recruit in the country yeah. to come to your college. Like every industry will get there. It's just going to take something game breaking for the really tough ones to pull in there. And Deion Sanders is like the prime example of that. And it's funny to see where he's came. Cause like it was a Dana beers, like kind of following him um, doing the, the prime documentary <laughs> yeah. when he was coaching at um, Jackson state. Ja- yeah. Jackson state. And then it's just kind of escalated in uh, a snowball effect. Now at this point, and <laughs> it's, 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 it's in, blown yeah. out of proportion, but you say that, like, it's going to happen, right? Home Depot. But the the irony to the whole situation is characters as brands has not been a new concept. Jared from Subway, the Verizon guy who became the mm-hmm. Sprint guy, right? Like, these concepts aren't new. It's just that they've been maybe not – they they haven't adjusted to the times. Right. right? It's, it's not it's not new uh, new idea. It's just yeah. a new delivery or a new platform or whatever. And it yeah. feels easy to be like, let's just move here and do things like natively here. But yeah. it takes a long time for a lot of – people and and brands and companies to kind of recognize that and start moving that last week we talked about the price of a commercial yeah if you spend eight hundred thousand dollars building a character into your content like no no one yeah why not but do yeah like in it's like the the character into the content fucking jake from state farm yeah they have done they have actually done a job where he is a character no one knows that guy's name he sits courtside at nba games it makes sense. But okay, back to the first conversation we had when this when this episode started. How fucking annoying do you think that is? I, You're Jake from State Farm. You can't walk anywhere without being like, Jake, Jake from State Farm. I'm it's like a good brand. Oh, I guess. It's a good brand. I don't know if I love that. I don't know if I love You just that. want to be Nick Urcolano. Let's make it clear. This guy's name is Nick Urcolano. You can call me Jack. You can call me the horse guy. I don't I don't care me. what you call me, but like what you're known for, I don't care. You're known for I'm being known for something is fine, but like being a character of yourself is is a weird that's, thing. That's tough. Like flow from progressive. Yeah. Like your flow. It's like, yeah, sure. Like in commercials. <laughs> She's also such a tough character. Like I hate her commercials. <laughs> with a fire burning passion. Uh all right. Pat McAfee. So Dion McAfee did a little stuff together. It's all this cross promotion ESPN stuff. But we were in the office. We're sitting down. You turned on Deal or No Deal, and then you turned on Pat Mac. And you asked me if I watched. Just for the record, I didn't turn on Deal or No Deal when our TV. I swear <laughs> to God on this. For some reason, okay. Also, like if all my music apps are closed on my phone, and I just hit like play on my headphones when everything closed, it's, it's you just too. no, no, no. It plays. Uh, Sorry, Miss Jackson. By Sorry, okay. Miss Jackson. For no reason. It's not like on any of my playlists. It just starts playing. Who's it by? 
Outcast. Okay. No, I was thinking alphabetically. No, no, no. It, it's. I think it might be. I might have like downloaded it to my Apple Music yeah, eight yeah. years ago. You did. And every and it's the only song that ever plays when I do it. So, yeah. uh, anyways, that's like the same thing with Deal or No yeah, Deal okay. on our TV. It's like auto programmed to a Deal or No Deal network. <laughs> I'm fucking fired up about. It. <laughs> the ratings are high, and it's your inspiration for TikTok and your trivia stuff. So. Nick said, when was the last time or have you watched McAfee on ESPN on the physical channel? And so it was weird to see me going through the TV channels and it was just like Sports Center and it was like TV. I thought you were going through YouTube though. YouTube TV. Oh, YouTube TV. YouTube TV, it's yeah. It's kind of funny. So the first day it launched, we happened to be in Kansas City and we didn't have anything to do at that point in time. And I never turn on ESPN to watch any of their shows, NFL Live, NBA reporting, any of that stuff. So we did turn it on. And it was funny. On day one, like, the ticker was a little bit off. Like, there were some stuff okay. that just wasn't working. He was cursing, and then he quickly realized he probably shouldn't be doing that. But I think they were tape delaying it by 10 seconds, whatever they might be doing. I what did they do it. for the curses? Um, did they beep them out? I don't know. I, I wasn't that locked in. But Dial in. I know, I need to be more dialed <laughs> in. So, I haven't turned it back on. I see his clips all the time. I think he's gotten a ton of run with College Game Day and, and the McAfee show in general and all that stuff being shared. Now, on SportsCenter's account, on Instagram, on ESPN's account, on Twitter, stuff like that. So, the exposure's been great. I haven't necessarily tuned in. There hasn't been any ratings released. I think the general question is, is, like, is it a positive? Do you find it to be a positive? Are you hearing less about McAfee now or more about McAfee? I, how to be honest, I was never really in McAfee's world, mm -hmm. uh, so I don't actually follow. I think that's actually a good vantage point to give. Okay, so I guess maybe I overall I'd say maybe less. Okay. I hear less about it now because I see less clips. Okay, so his his clips previously, I feel like every, every 15 seconds of, of his show would, be would get clipped and put on Twitter. Twitter. I'm going to check that not right the same now. Anymore? Yeah, I'm going to check. Because right if not, now. that I feel like is actually a very big hit to uh, his brand. Pat McAfee. So they're live from 12 to 3, so they're live right now. Breaking news. No, they're they're still pumping them out. But maybe they just get less attention. I don't. I, I genuinely don't know okay. what it is. I really don't. Yeah, so, I, I, um, I, yeah like I said, I'm, I'm not like against him or for him or whatever, yeah. but I just wasn't really in his community, so I don't know the energy of like the shift of you know, where it's gone and whatever but like i'm sure it was well thought out when he made the move beforehand yeah. to to what his values in his life were at that point so it's like yeah. i don't know you, you kind of exposure is probably higher sure. or, or like it's just ESPN to a new audience, audience but is that the right audience for him it might not be but but it is once you reach that that exit velocity right we're talking about dion with mcafee it's like there's a certain point where not everything's going to be track, tracked and palpable of, like, what's the effect of this? Like, how many people could I drive to FanDuel? Like, at some point, his profile just becomes bigger because WWE, ESPN, College Game Day, and people just know the name more. I will say, as someone who has made fun of ESPN for putting people in suits, and I just don't think that sports broadcasters and analysts should wear suits. Mm -hmm. No one wears suits when you watch a football game, so why are they doing that? I still think you should keep a professional look. His being on the polar opposite, when I turn on ESPN and I see him in a tank top, feels weird. Feels weird. It just feels weird. It felt weird, weird yesterday. And it felt like radio show time when yeah. I'm like, it doesn't, it didn't feel like ESPN. That's the issue is like. Would you like if he came on in a suit? I think I kind of no, would. What? I think I Only would. if he was trolling. Right. But yeah, it yeah, like, yeah. but a long-term troll bit. Like. Like he had to wear a suit. No, nah, no. Nah. If, if he wore a suit, I Like he didn't it. have to, but like he bought into being like, if this to would be To be in a suit? Yeah. Only if it was part of the bit, but. Uh, a short term bit. But how before. how long can a bit be before? It's well, no bits can a bit. be bits can be forever. My whole life is a bit. Yeah, <laughs> your your life is genuinely a bit. Um, so I don't know. I think overall it's probably a plus for him. He's going to get more eyeballs on him. I have a topic we can talk about. Go ahead. That um, we've been, <clears throat> or I can. Re I think you could probably relate to maybe a little bit internally. So I, one of the things that I really really strongly believe as. Um, someone running this company is that I want my employees to have leverage over me when the time comes, when me, when, when we sit down and we either need to renew a contract yeah. or we want to negotiate salary or whatever the case may be. I want them to be able to come in there and say like, I'm worth, I'm worth more than what you're saying. Yeah. And here are the seven reasons why. Um, so one thing we've, I, I think this is something we've always done well. It's like, if you come into BDG, you're probably going to build a personal brand. Mm -hmm. It's just something we've been good at for whatever reason. And, with that comes a lot of attention on each person individually. They gain their own platform. And then I am not trying to stifle anyone. So I'm the first one to go out of my way, like 
got got 10k followers on tiktok within mm. a few weeks of being here and he was like how do you get a promo code on underdog i was like let me hit up my guy i'll yeah. give you a promo code gut for underdog mm. we don't take a cut of that right like you're not worried he's still an intern he's not yeah, working yeah. for us one of the things i've never really had to face head on yet and, and and i've seen you've seen it play out now like in barcelona before where you know it's like how much is the individual worth to the actual company and like are you signing your rights away to mm -hmm. the content that you make to the company that you're working for etc so i'm kind of like going through the fine line i sat down with jameson because jameson's here till probably the end of the winter and he was like i'm trying to figure out um what my future plans are and i'm like you're doing a great job like i'd love to keep you on long term obviously mm -hmm. and i think outside of something drastic happening i, I will keep you on long term mm -hmm. and then he's like okay what would happen to me being able to, because right now, because he's not working full time with us, he's promoting you know other companies and stuff on yeah, his yeah. personal page, right? Okay. Whether it's uh, Underdog and Prize Pick, he's not exclusive anywhere, got basically. It, so it. you can promote a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like kind of toying back and forth with the idea of like, okay, you still re you represent our brand now, yeah. and like I'm not, I, I could really care less, but I know a company like Underdog, who's you know financially invested into yeah, us, yeah. doesn't really want to see that stuff. So when he's full time with us, he's like, that's a lot of my income i think i could match whatever you'd pay me salary wise probably with that mm -hmm. and i'm like okay well one is cool that you would say that that you'd want to be invested here when you could make your own money right because you're believing in something bigger two it's like that in itself is a really good negotiating point for you to bring to me because it's say like yeah. hey say like you come in and say i can make forty thousand dollars off of uh, affiliates on my own why don't you use that to leverage against me and say like this is why my salary should be an extra thirty thousand and also give me equity in the company because mm -hmm. i can help build along the way kind of thing so i guess like not necessarily a question, but just an open conversation as someone who's a leader in the media company, like Casey, starting yeah. to build his own brand. Let's say, I don't even know if Underdog does soccer pick -ems? Yeah. Okay, so soccer yeah. pick -ems, right? He, like, he did a reverse sweep on his picks yesterday, so. Really? We're all, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're all good. Right? We're all good. Okay, but for real, though, does yeah. he have his own promo code? Or would uh, he use Snapback? No, he does not. Riley, who runs our social media and has a Celtics Twitter account, we gave him when they were running some Celtics stuff just to test and see numbers. Casey doesn't. He runs our Snapback Bets account on Snap. So we got it. We actually yesterday texted Zach and got a unique code to just, just for tracking purposes. Uh, my, my take on it is we're not paying Casey to be a personality, right? If yep. you're paying someone to be a personality, then 100%, you, you take that into the equation. And if that grows out of it, and him being talent and personality, it, it just adds more value to it. So the way I would do it is I would pull Jameson within, I would take all his affiliate money, I would just pretty much project out against his salary, maybe bonus against it. So if he supersedes it, you know, he makes sure he gets paid. If he just hits his normal numbers, it's already kind of factored in. You take on a little bit of the risk. You take on a so little bit of the this is his personal upside. accounts, yeah. personal content. Yes. Okay. Like that is, that is, so I would say same thing with Barstool, right? If, if there's a certain person at Barstool who when they post their sports book, like, Bet with me on Barstool Sportsbook. If they're getting a ton of new players, then they their salary would be higher because of that. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That that's kind of the way. That's what I was saying. Like end and around. So, I want so you to be able apply, to come leverage. Yeah, this could this could apply to merch, right? If you guys are doing merch and you bring and Tony's like unbelievable at at selling merch, right? Like if if you can directly relate his content to selling merch, then yeah, he deserves more money if it's making the company. So more like Don's money. merch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like he, sh he should have, he should have either yeah. negotiated that or now when he comes to the table and he's like, Hey, I do this for the company. It brings in X revenue. So just another reason to build a personal brand yeah. where you're at anywhere. Yeah. hundred percent. Now the trickiest part, and I think this actually does apply to more than just media companies and our companies is, is it the chicken or the egg, right? Without the BDG ecosystem, and I'm not even talking about growing personal brand, but without the ecosystem of content and without the suppliers, without the website, without the designers, without yep. the shipping, all that stuff, right? Like if he were to go do it on his own, what's Would that success impact, look like, right? right? No, but that doesn't mean it's not impactful, right? It's like- It is. That's why it makes me, it, it, it's, a, a, it's one of the like very few situations in business that make me a little bit uncomfortable because me, who I am personally- yeah would not give a fuck. I'd be like, go make, go make your money. Yeah. Then it's like me, the business leader is investing a shit ton of my own yeah, money yeah, yeah. into a business that allows you the infrastructure to have this type of success. Yeah. Where it's like, I think probably a middle ground somewhere. Um, I just don't really know 
I guess like what it is. And I hate, like, I don't want to have people like sign contracts for like your content's not your content. If yeah. you're under BDG, you're like, we're taking your money because you're working for that too. But I'm not naive enough to know that we're not also setting you up for success yeah. to get a bigger platform. No, every, everyone in. who works with us is exclusive to our partners. If that exclusivity. So Casey cannot work with prize picks. He can't work with Mojo. But like full time employees. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. That, and, that, and, that, that uh, for sure. Like I, like Tony would never. Are like, you guys exclusive to underdog? Yeah. In what capacity? DFS. DFS. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that is, I don't know. And all those other, I mean, all those other brands are DFS. No, I know. Yeah. I know. So, yeah, we wouldn't be able to do that. Casey could not promote prize picks and have a promo code. Uh, he mm -hmm. could play on it. Yeah. But, yeah, he couldn't do that. If he weren't full-time, though. Uh, if he weren't full-time. Like, you're saying if he was an intern? Sure. If he was an intern, policy would still apply for us. <laughs> the Roman Empire. How many times a week do you think about the Roman Empire? Well, this ha that's how we're starting the section. You're yeah, going to yeah. actually ask me. I, I haven't I, thought about the Roman. Well, now probably about six times a day because of this trend in my fucking right. head. Yeah. But prior to that, maybe Are you a fan of the ago. Roman Empire? So overall, yeah. I don't know anything about the Roman Empire except yeah. like their cool ass helmets, yeah. which are fire. And have you ever been to Rome? No. Nah. I've never even been place. to Europe. Really? Yeah. That's why you want to go to London so bad. Yeah, but none of my friends will go with me. I mean, I'll go with you. It just can't be to watch Desmond Ritter. I told you, I would not cross any ocean to watch Desmond Ritter play football. It's, what it's about like, Trevor Lawrence? It's like a command. What about Trevor Lawrence? That's my guy. Okay. That's how bad Problem Ritter solved. is that I wouldn't. Like, they don't. It doesn't counterbalance. All right, Bijan. Like, we have enough good on our phone. Bijan is must-watch TV. It's yeah. honestly like Bijan, Deion Sanders. It's like, it's like Bijan, like, I'll see your clip on Twitter. And then. No, no, no. You're, you're like you, Desmond is, Ritter is must watch TV. Okay, there you go. Two because Falcons must watch. Every Two time, Falcons right next to each other. Every time watch. Desmond Ritter was no, on I'm television, sorry. me and my friends were like, "Yo, are you watching this? Like, this is Not insane. Good. Not good. This is insane." Anyways, uh, Dude, you're being a hater on the Bijan thing, though. He's like actually incredibly no, 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 fun to watch. But but that's the thing about he's turned our media. city around. He's the savior of the city. <laughs> okay. New Anyways. York city. Roman Empire, if you guys have been living under a rock or under the Colosseum, maybe you haven't seen the trend. Some lady asks, you know, how many times do guys think about the Roman Empire? Then, you know, apparently men are thinking about the Roman Empire a ton. I'm not one of those people, but apparently men are. The girls were asking their boyfriends or their husbands how many times, and it became a whole trend. The reason I bring it up is because I think there is – a, a fun conversation about how much should someone get into a trend versus how much should they, if maybe it doesn't fit their content or should they adjust their content to fit into the trend? What are your thoughts? I think trends should TikTok allows trends to amplify what you're doing. Yeah. So I think it should definitely be part of your strategy. If a platform operates the way that TikTok does. Yes. Um, so we, we have like when we, when we do our content schedule now, mm -hmm. which is like super precise time, what type of content, that kind of shit, we will have spots where it's like trend TikTok yeah. or trend okay. or whatever. It That's is. good to know. Um, that being said though, like that trend in particular, I think, I think a lot of trends can steer you down the wrong path and that 95% of those, that those TikTok trend, like that trend of those TikToks, I yeah. just don't believe like they're just not funny to me because they're forced and their people are like faking their yeah. answers and stuff like that and trying to be funny but with it. It's easy for a hook. It is easier to, to draw people in. But, like my mind goes to could you do a grid trivia of like the Greg Roman Empire players who played for Greg Roman, mm -hmm. right? Like simple things. That's really good. Where, That's creative. Yeah. Thank That's good. You. Where where people are just. You know, you're not you're not like going into the most prehistoric players who changed the game and built like great teams, right? That's so like, good. I actually got right. <laughs> <laughs> but like, even just using the name, if you start off, it's like Grid Trivia, Greg Roman Empire, right? Like that is going to hook in at least one percent more people, and there's no reason not to do it. But I think in some cases, it's like you probably shouldn't, but in others, you should. If you're doing a food TikTok, it's like. The best foods from Roman Empire. Like, no, no, no. That, why th th not? These are good ideas. And I, I definitely, um, I'm, I'm fine hopping on trends, especially seeing like the power of them yeah. uh, on a platform like that. But I think you can definitely cross the line where you're doing them too. You're like relying on them yes. as your thing. And that's yeah. like, that's you relying on somebody else. And that means you'll never build your own. Per like right. a personal brand is just the uniqueness of who you are as a person. And if you, if you do everything just through trend -based, what other yeah. people are doing, then it's not you anymore. It's yeah. just, it's just a uh, culmination of, 18,000 other people. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so it, I, I think trends are useful. I think they're definitely, especially helpful. on platform. I think yeah. you made a good point. Like 
I don't know if I'd go and do stuff on Twitter or on YouTube, but on TikTok, you open with something Roman Empire related right now. Well, even, it will even Twitter, even Twitter does like trendy kind of stuff yeah. where if you find the right like topic or the right like tweet that went viral, I, I can't think of any off the head, but I've, I've remembered a few, yeah. a, a few trending ones like those can catch fire as well, yeah. I think. And, and that's a platform that you could easily use your personality, I think, for. Yeah. All right, last thing, office space. So we went, we looked at some more spots. We did a first round. We liked some spots, and then we did a second round. I don't even know if I liked them as much as, like, I liked them more than the ones that I didn't like that day. That's true. But I think we could have found one that we would have been sure. satisfied with. But then a second round. We're not here much, for satisfaction. We're yeah, here for greatness. For Jack. greatness. We're dialed. Correct. So I did say to you, I thought they were more expensive. And after looking at the full pricing, they are more expensive. They are... There's one that was like more expensive, but for the most part, they all fell into the same. I think there was just more expensive ones. Yeah, like, sure. like they were all in the same range, but maybe the first time around, like three were like here yeah. and two were here. And the second time around, like one or two were here and like three and were up here. Yeah. Okay. That's Anyways. why I said it to the, to the broker yesterday. I was like, we're okay with this price range, but yeah. not in the okay way of like, now you've got us here and now we can keep moving yeah, up. Yeah, here. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. that's what brokers do in New York with yeah. any kind of, uh, Real estate kind of like when you're looking for an actual apartment, whatever. So I didn't know anything about the commercial real estate game mm -hmm. office, like looking for office space. Thankfully you've been through it. But then I was talking to Alex. He's looking for office space for the agency out in LA. Mm -hmm. Also shout out snapback agency. We just made another hire. We added yeah. someone to the team. Aspen Odom. Excited to have the her marketing. Uh, well. Yeah. The marketing marketing role. So looking for office space, going to be a team of three out there. And he was like, I've been looking at WeWork and then I've been looking at my own and it's just like tough. And I was like, have you talked to a broker? Have you like, he didn't know anything about this, mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting. So I, I lent him some advice on the availability out there, but I don't know if anyone works in LA. I has. can, I could maybe help you out. Cause the reason my, my cousin is a commercial real estate yeah. uh, person in out in California, but oh, lived nice. in, grew up in, in New York. So I had all the contacts in New York. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I hit him up and he put me in touch with Donald okay. and, and those guys there. And now he's more like, I, I think he might be residential real estate okay. now selling like really nice homes in San yeah, Fran yeah. and shit like that. But I'm sure he's got connects out there. Yeah. So I could, after the show, I, okay. I think it, the very tiny takeaway was like, just ask, you got to ask people because, or else you think, you know what you're going into, but he didn't even know you could like build your own office. You could, you know, yeah. add walls. Like I Especially didn't Especially something at, at, at that large of a scale yeah like it's sometimes it's okay to i, I toy with this back and forth because I'm, I'm i'm of the mindset now that like i kind of like making mistakes yeah on smaller scales because it, it that's the only way you learn quickly yeah but like larger scale things no you don't want to get into a three-year lease and be like oh uh, you could have had a up. broker for that yeah exactly so um that's that's definitely something it, I, I was thinking about this actually something you said uh a couple episodes ago when you when you were like you're kind of like ruthless as, as a leader now and i'm like yeah. In my mind, the reason I'm like that now is because the stakes are so fucking high, yeah. right? Like I'm not, the amount of money and the amount of time and energy that I invest into what we're doing here mm -hmm. is everything to me. Yeah. So it's like, I'm not going to let someone who's half-hearted, I'm not going to let someone who doesn't want to be here, I'm not going to let, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Like the reason I'm ruthless is because it's it, it, it's not 10% of my investment. Mm -hmm. Like everything I have is into yeah. this. So it's like, if you're not matching my energy, then I'm going to be ruthless because yeah, yeah. I, I don't need people around me that aren't. But like that, that doesn't mean you're not letting them make mistakes if they're good sure. mistakes. If you're, and, and, if you're and also, messing up for no reason, no. Sure. And ruthless doesn't mean like mean or being like a <laughs> dick, you know? And I yeah. can be if I need to be, yeah. but I don't do that for the sake of doing it. Ruthless is just like very strict, yeah. like very like, these are the things that we need to do. These, you know, whatever it, the yeah. case may be. But I, but I think about, with about that. that now with like larger scale decisions yeah. you have to make, you have to be ruthless. Like you yeah. have to be, I think a good like litmus test is, um, when you, if, if I, you, I don't, you don't have any tattoos, right? Mm -mm. But I know a lot of people that will go to get tattoos and the person will like put it on them. And yeah. like they, rather than like being, being able to ask them like, Hey, I actually don't really like that. Can you make this like a half an inch bigger, yeah. move it down a little bit? They'll be like, ah, I'll get it. And they'll kind of live with that regret, you know? And I think that's like being, or even getting a massage, right? Yeah. And the person's like, how's this feel? And you would like it a little softer, <laughs> a little harder. Most so humans don't, say, don't yeah. have like the, uh, the skin to, to, to say that kind of yeah. thing. And I think with these larger scale decisions you make, you have to be, you have to start getting comfortable with it. Yeah. You have to be able to tell people shit that you don't like, because like, then you're just going to live with a lot of regret and a lot of pent up, like, yeah. uh, anger at yourself. Cause you're the one that didn't want to do those 100%. things. Especially at the, at that scale, right. which is your point. If, if the massage, she could have gone a little softer. You get what I mean? You can it's a good that. litmus test because a lot of people yeah. just won't do it. And then like, if you can do it, you're like, 
oh, I can unlock like the world that I want. And it also asking. is such an easy thing to just say. But it's hard. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's hard to do those things. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, we're looking for office space. We're looking for office space. And we found some spots that we like. We got to put an LOI in about how the build goes. Uh, important things that I think we've learned along the way, like lighting is, is massively important for us outside of that, having working air conditioning, is probably huge. huge based off how you've experienced this place. What do, what are your feelings? Like, do we feel like we move on this in a week's time, a month's time? Like, where I, are we I think, at? I think we'll let them know based on the email they sent. They sent us over a recap of all the places we saw the square footage, the price that it's going to be. Um, or the negotiating price that mm -hmm. it starts at. And then we hit them back basically with like, hey, these are our top three or four. Why don't we get into negotiations with them yeah. and see what it comes back with? Because we'll get offers like, we'll we'll try to hit a price mark on, let's say like, we're not looking to go above these. And the original offer from them was really high. We might be able to get three of them down to like where we wanted yeah. and we'll eliminate places based on that. Um, so it kind of depends on what they come back with afterwards. But we kind of tell them our, our favorite, like what we're looking for. Mm -hmm for the most part. And then it just goes back and forth for a little for yeah. a while. Yeah. Another thing I was telling Alex, just cause I know from you is like, all right, he's like, let's do 5k a month in rent. And then it's like, well, you need a security deposit. You need furniture. You mm -hmm. need desks, chairs, like they're at plumbing utilities, Wi-Fi, And I was like, the reason that we work actually isn't an awful option, especially for a team of three is because you get all those things built in. You don't got to clean your own bathroom, yeah. right? Like there are things that maybe you don't think about when you do that stuff, but it's exciting times to. How, to how are you that. looking at the process in terms of like which one you want? Because obviously we have those like staples that we want. Yeah. Like I want to be able yeah. to control the AC. Like that is actually as, as much as we joke about it, it's actually important to me because <laughs> the way I feel while I'm working, like I don't want to be exhausted yeah. because we're sitting in fucking 80 degrees. Yeah, 100%. Heat. Those kind of things. Other than that, I'm like very low maintenance with it. Yeah. And I kind of have just been going into the offices, walking in and being like, I like the energy here. Like yep. I could definitely work here. Yeah. Like that's good enough for me. How I'm looking at it is honestly, it's like a bonus for us. I, I mean, we joked about it, how I'm getting the office for Casey mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's just going to make him 10 times more efficient. But I know that me being able to sit down and, and also like feel more relaxed when you're, when you're at home alone, it's just not as exciting. Yeah. It's not as inspirational. I see you guys making content here. I'm like, all right, we should be doing that. Another thing that is is very selfish, I think, on my part is we need more characters in our content. And it doesn't mean full time characters, but I think you just being there, Tony being there, like just more bodies in yeah. and out. Like the cross pollination is gonna be very cool. Exactly. And I think that's where we don't we don't need the office. And I think I've told you that before. And I'm not it's not like a negotiation of, hey, we don't need the office. Like, you should pay for the whole thing. Uh, but I think, like, you're at an understanding where you know, you know, we don't want to be in this thing halfway because we just don't need it. Yeah. But but we will pick up many benefits from it as well. And if we do a two-year lease, it's like, where are we going to be in two years? Who knows? Maybe mm -hmm. we do add two full-time characters. And then the script changes where it's like you just have 48 interns, which I think is your dream. It's just to have like little Things just change so fuck. quickly. Yeah. Before we got in here, I didn't I didn't know if we needed it, but I was like, I want to try it. And yeah. now that we have it, I'm like, you need it. I don't even know what I would be anymore yeah. if we didn't have this place. Like, what would your, con what would your company no, be? I have no probably idea. probably be at a very similar place to where, to you where I was. Yeah, yeah 100%. And that, that was where I was like, we're not going to level up unless I make this decision yeah. right now and try to like go after it. And that's, I, I think that and should be the mindset you, for you too. Can you quantify the dollars to ROI? Cause, cause uh, I don't think I'll be able to do that for a long time or, or at least, and it's been what, two years, two years. So, so I didn't want you to, I was trying to make a point, which is this Marlin stuff, right? We know exactly how many dollars we're spending on it. Yeah. And of course, like based off YouTube revenue and also based off of, you know, any partners we sell in, like we'll be able to to see, all right, was it worth it? Was it not? But there's so many things that you just can't calculate, like yeah. brand <laughs> awareness, like all that stuff that it's the same thing. You got this office, it changed your company. We invest in Marlin. It's going to change our company. It's going to send us in different directions. So mm. it, as long as you can keep investing in your company, it's going to continue to build it. That's why I, I had hesitation. It was pre-football season where we weren't making as much money. We joked about mm. that yesterday. And now it's like, all right, we have we have the funds to do this. And it's something I need to need to invest in. So uh, I'm excited for it. You got the you flashing. The yeah. Oh, it's that one. Yeah. I was about to say, do you feel the music from the yeah. music studio down yeah. below? Yeah. 
Uh, the first time Is we it walked a music studio or the gym a music studio ah. there's like actual rappers coming in all the time really yeah like uh i met the guy it's, it's kind of cool he's trying to link us up with like asap 12 and shit <laughs> it's pretty funny the first day we came in here it was rocking it this was place bullpen. and i was like yeah like 10 to 5 can't be happy yeah, <laughs> yeah please kind of yeah. thing um yeah, I mean, that, that's the other thing, too, is, like, you unlock so much along the way that you just didn't even know, like, like Alex looking for yeah. commercial, like, he doesn't know options. You don't know options until yeah. you come across them, which I think is going to be a huge unlock for you guys because you're not even thinking about content the same way that we probably do mm-hmm. now at this point. So um, I, the only, like, downside of it is, yeah, it's a little bit of a, a financial investment. It is. Other than that, it's like no, a No, it's not side. little. I don't, I don't want to understand yeah, it. Fair, like, fair. you know, it could be... You know, let's say we go 5K a month for the agency. Could be another person. Like, yeah. you can make an argument that you're now picking, you know, a desk over having another person working on the business. But it's it's not great when you when you look at it that way. So, <laughs> so we're not. <laughs> so we're not going to do that. And we hired someone anyway. So that's big content. Head to San Francisco tomorrow morning. Be back Friday. Um, excited. Excited for that. What do you got going on? Anything? No, not really. We're about to. We're almost finished with our our website with our with JL coming on board so we're about to launch it's about feel, damn time JL I feel about <laughs> one week time. dude unbelievable uh, I feel really good about that I feel really good about the direction of that we don't really have much else going on we we have such a, a tight schedule in season from top to bottom that it's kind of now just like last 6 months were prep time fun creativeness and yep. now it's just like go 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 go, go. It's go time. All right, people. Well, make sure you hit like, subscribe, leave a comment, and go, go, go. Dialing. Casey wants to do trivia. Do you have anything for him? Uh, we only film on Tuesday. You got to come in on Tuesday. We got, uh, you know, Kansas? Oh. He was at the game last night. How'd you get that? Actually, you know, you know basketball? Can you uh, close that, Casey? Sinking audio and video. Hmm. NBC Boston's putting Marlon saying Belichick's watched on their TV segments. <laughs> I've had a couple people send me that. That's hilarious. They're like, don't you know this white boy? <laughs> All right. I need my phone because. Yeah, let me pull up the. Uh... <sighs>